Kia ora everyone, my name is Matt Tukaki. Uh, many of you know me as the Chairman of Suicide Prevention Australia. Uh, but today, uh, I'm not here in that capacity. I'm here as Matt Tukaki, somebody like many of you who has been impacted by suicide directly. Uh, both my best friend and extended family members. It's a very difficult thing to deal with in the after event because you're struggling to find answers to questions. Questions that sometimes just can't be answered. The why, for example. And while we struggle with that every single day, there is something that we can all do to prevent suicide in our communities, in our families, uh, in our homes, in our workplaces, and all of these things in between. So coming to you from my dining room at home, I wanted to have a conversation with you about what some of those things are that we can all be doing. Uh, in the body of this video, there is a link to some resources and also some phone numbers. Uh, and for my Māori brothers and sisters in particular, uh, there is a link to something called How to Have a Kōrero uh, and where to get some help, particularly in New Zealand. Uh, from my perspective, I talk about daily struggles in our lives every single day. Uh, and while I don't want to have a conversation about the importance or not of mental health in this discussion, because it is fundamentally important, I just wanted to focus on daily struggle stuff that a lot of us have going on every single day, every week, every month, every year sometimes. Uh, a relationship breakdown, the loss of a loved one, uh, financial instability, uh, financial stress, uh, where do I get the money to pay for the mortgage, or little Tommy's uh, stationery at the beginning of the year for school. How do I put food on the table if there's no income coming through? Uh, everything from those sorts of things to a small business failure. Uh, all of these things we all struggle with every day. I struggle every single day, trust me. Um, I struggle with life and career. I struggle with the stress of schedules and getting on planes and all of these things in between. So having a conversation with your friends or your loved ones is one way of letting them know that you are here and that you are listening and that you're on tap to support them if the need arises. Because sometimes having a conversation can make the biggest difference in somebody's life. So I want to talk to you about some of those questions and also recognising some of the signs that somebody might be in trouble. So let's start with the signs first. All right, so number one, changes in behaviour. So somebody's behaviour has changed and it's not normal, it's not regular, it's not who you recognise them to be. That's one sign that they need some support or are struggling. Uh, number two, changes in sleeping patterns. Mind you, I must admit my sleeping patterns are pretty terrible, but sleeping patterns, you know, people who are up late at night playing on that Facebook thing or posting on social media or anything like that, you know, is somebody's sleeping pattern disturbed? Uh, number three, people who withdraw from um, their friend networks and family networks and social circles. Um, they're there one day, but they're starting to withdraw the next more and more and more and more. Um, loss of interest in routine activities or work, not turning up to sports practice, uh, being late for work constantly and consistently, or sometimes just not even turning up. Mood swings is another one. Um, their mood changes so irrationally uh, that they're happy one day, they're sad the next, hot and cold, cold and hot. We all know somebody with mood swings. Um, number seven is mention of the word plan. Uh, those who are considering suicide will have made a plan or are working on a plan. Um, people who put their affairs in order or talk openly and out of character when it comes to death. So when that happens, you know that something could be going on and that's matched with giving away of personal items or things that are really, really valuable to them. Uh, and number nine, sorry, ten, uh, not turning up for planned events, family occasions or activities. So, you know, invitation to a wedding, didn't turn up. Invitation to something, didn't turn up. All of these things are important to recognise and understand. So what are, the, some of the, what are some of the things that we can do? What are some of the questions that we can ask? And, and this is largely from our friends at Are You OK Day as well, okay? So talking with a loved one about how they feel and their emotions can be a challenge. So here are some pointers. Uh, and let me tell you, I still am challenged by asking these questions as well. Sometimes I miss the opportunity and think I have to come back, but here are four things that you can do. 
Uh, number one, ask, are you okay? By asking the question, it shows you care, especially in a trusted friendship or connection or relationship. It makes it easier for the person to open up to you. Uh, the right environment is also key. It may be asking the question in a place that might be comfortable for the person or familiar to them. Go out for a cup of tea. Go out for a coffee. Sit in the lounge room, wherever it is that is comfortable for that person, just to have a chat. Even go out to the local park for a sandwich for lunch with them. Uh, number two, listen without judgment. Now, this is something that Mike King, a very good friend of mine, talks about all the time when it comes to adults talking with children. Just listen without judgment. Don't judge what might be happening in somebody's life, what might be going on. Don't judge that uh, they uh, are heavy drinkers or um, take drugs or uh, are unkempt or anything. Listen without judgment, please. It is the most important thing that we can do. Because we all face different situations in our lives. So when you're in that conversation, just keep these on. Sometimes it's better to do less talking and more listening. Uh, number three, encourage action. Talk to them uh, about where to from here. You know, if it is a daily struggle thing, if it's something to do with the rent or the mortgage or food on the table or anything like that, um, there are support services that you can go to. And I've listed all of these uh, in this, uh, this post. So it could be, what is the next step? How can I help you? What can we do together to get this situation sorted out? Uh, and number four, and possibly always the most important, is checking in. So once that conversation is concluded, uh, don't just say, okay, not a problem at all. It's all sorted now. It's not. The check-in is absolutely, absolutely important uh, when it comes to connecting with somebody or reaching out. So these are just some of the simple things that I think we can all do in the lives of our friends, our loved ones, our neighbours, our community. But I guess some of the most important things um, from my perspective uh, are also just daily things that I used to do, but it seems as if we've lost touch with them. Uh, number one, if you see somebody on the street who is genuinely struggling, sitting in a corner or a park bench, um, looking particularly down or sad, step up and go up to them. Sit down and ask, are you okay? Is everything all right? I do it all the time. Sometimes people think I'm a little bit crazy. <laughs> uh, but I will never forget the uh, the case only about two months ago uh, when I saw some, uh, some lady, I didn't know who she was, um, middle-aged, uh, sitting on a park bench in Hyde Park in Sydney, um, and she just looked distraught. She looked confused. She looked as if she didn't know where she was. I sat down with her and I said, um, is everything all right? And she said, um, no, but it's none of your business. And I said, look, I know it's none of my business, but I'm not going to leave this park bench until I know you're okay. We went for a cup of tea. We sat down, we had a chat. And there was a next step moment. Her relationship with her partner was right in the middle of breaking down. And so, further on to Relationships Australia uh, as a next step, and then followed her up in the days after. She's still with us. She is an amazing lady with an amazing amount of potential. But this is it. There are two things that we can do. One, keep our eyes open. Number two, keep our ears open. And a final one, maybe third, number three, ask the question, are you okay? So there you go, I'm Matt Tukaki. Hopefully this was useful. Um, it was useful for me uh, as somebody who, again, struggles every single day uh, with a number of people that want to reach out to me. So I'm hoping that this is just a very small thing that you can take some lessons from, some encouragement from, and know when to ask the questions. Uh, there are some numbers, like I said, on this video, uh, and please do reach out. And um, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to comment uh, on this video. And I'm sure people who are watching the video and reading the video comments, uh, particularly myself, um, will reply. Thank you.